up for it, and that's HCRA. Uh, my favorite season's coming. Fall air, got my winter hat, got my SHCRA stuff. Years ago, I got fed up with ISR and their rules. Their rules never fail, favored trail guys, so I started my own circuit. I also started it because I love the race. I've got the NHRA record of 160.50, but running one of these sleds up a ski hill, trust me, guys, is much more fun. We have classes for everyone. We've had uh, Danny Davis showing up twice at our races. The outlaw guy had a great time. Uh, we like innovation. Here's a 440. We just filled a set of pipe for mod sled. All he needs to do is get a clutch cover on it and a tether, and he can run. He can even put a duct tape seat on. We don't care. I have guys bring in an old ZR with a duct tape seat and proudly tell me they've paid it. 400 bucks for it, and they shut up for the race. That's great. They try to grow this sport. There is one other circuit that does a good job, Jerry Race Racing. He's got a full schedule out. Uh, our schedule works around his. I do show up at uh, Jerry's races because I, I, I love the race. So, guys, here's how ours work. We've got the quickest, most efficient um, – because we're at ski slopes, we have to get in and out, and spectators only have a short attention span. So, Beth, uh, my assistant, is one of the keys of my team. She does sign up, she does pay out, she does registration. Red does the top of the hill. He uses an iPhone and he can slow the video down. He can tell within an inch on who won. And at the end of the night, he loves to show me one where I get beat by two inches. So, I've got a great crew. Uh, we've got a few rich rules, and one of them is staging. After testing, which we now give you as many test runs as you can get in in your hour, hour and a half, rather than two. Um, you, I'm in class two. So I'm going to get this from Beth. I'm number 112, and then class two goes on my windshield. My other sled, I'm in class three. I'll, I'll have a sticker. This guy's in class one. He'll have a number in class one. So we have a sign over to the si side with our 36 classes. For a guy like me that gets confused, all I have to do, because I've got six sleds, I look, I'm in two. I get in two. It's first grade, guys. The other simple thing is, once I go up the hill, I'm on a Polaris 850, I'm probably going to win. Sled runs good. Hopefully I'm going to win. Tough competition. I pull right back down the hill. And right in two. So I make the final, or I get beat. The other beauty of three wide, it takes the third longer to run the race, but it gets the two fastest guys to the final because two advance, it gives everybody a lot more racing than two wide. Let me go over the uh, starting deal. Guys, right, come up here and just take a picture of this. Just like in HRA, I can roll out 12 inches before the red bulb comes on and sends me on the 20 hour drive home. At my series, because a lot of you trail guys, you're nervous, guys like me are nervous, if we bump our clutch and our sled moves ahead two, three, four inches, I don't care. The flagger, and here's another rule, guys. None of this somebody helping you like dirt racing, holding up the whole show, ruining it for the crowd. You're on your sled. Once the sled ahead of you leaves the line, you've got five seconds to get out, be ready to go. The third sled in, my flagger will have his arm up. As the third sled pulls in, his arm will come down. Within three to five seconds of the third sled pulling in, the tip of the flag comes up. He can flinch, he can do anything, he can look at his cell phone. The tip of the flag is key, guys. Most accurate way of flagging, other than lights. You can't use lights in the snow because you dig in. So, back to the 12 inch rule. Remember this, my flagger is as good as he is, he doesn't know 10 inches from 14 inches. So my advice is, you better not bump much, because he could call you out at 11 and a half. So here's how this works. my ruler there guys so I only went eight inches but you can see how little 12 inches is we do this so everybody has a good night racing I hate to somebody send somebody home because he moved I will tell you this as a pro driver if you move 
and you've moved that eight inches ahead, you are at a big disadvantage because mentally you are now off your game. The guy who has sat there like he should have, his sled is still planted, he is going to beat you off the line. Now, let's say I had a great night and I won. As soon as lane two is over, this gets flipped. Lane eight, you now should be in line within five minutes of once this is flipped. Because, I don't know if I mentioned it, if this guy in lane one follows a spark plug, I'm not going to send him home. He's paid to race. I'm going to let him fix his plug. I'm going to run lane two and three. When he's ready, we're going to send you guys out in lane one. So guys, it works this way the whole way down, all night long, lane three. You guys with the math goes to nine. As soon as three is done, it goes to nine. Now, if you are one of the lucky ones, like my stud boy Cad has been a few times. This sled runs great, by the way, with cold cutter screws, stud boy studs with the uh, nylon backers. If I do make a final and get first, second, or third at the top of the hill, Beth, who's down in staging, is going to key red that it's a final. I'm either going to get a first, second, or third card that I take in the payout. So I don't know if I mentioned this, guys. Uh, we like to have fun at our events. If you ever have a problem in the event, wait a week, go on Facebook, and go nuts. No, if you ever have a problem, come see me right away. Even if I'm my sled ready to go up the hill, just tap me. And uh, we'll get it resolved. Um, remember the grudge racing. That's my favorite part because I take this well-tuned cat out against the local guys and have a little fun. And then afterwards, we'll have a beer and chat about clutching. Thanks. Hope to see you at our series.